hey, before we get in this episode, can you do us a favor? We go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We ring that notification bell. And if you would, give this video a like. Well, enough of that mumbo jumbo. Let's get to the episode. Let's talk developmentally speaking, glow up, and connecting through wrestling. Hey everybody, I'm Morty. And I'm Brian. And on today's episode of Connecting Through Wrestling, we have a member of the ill-begotten, Alex Taylor. How's it going? Oh, it's going good, man. Actually, I don't want to start off on the wrong foot, but uh, I'm a little hesitant to come on this show. I saw you had that scumbag Sour Naro on, so it makes me question the credibility of this program. Hey, I... Way to go. I, I apologize for that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to apologize that it offended you. Um, we're just trying to reach out to every person that, that will, will take time to speak with us about their wrestling career. I, I'm not trying to offend anyone, of course, but, um, uh, we, I did see the, um, I did see Sal Renaro almost break, uh, break you in half. And, uh, I, I, if I were in the same, uh, the same boat as you, I would be angry as well. Well, I'm still walking. No thanks to Sal, but it's it's cool. I'm alive, okay. so I'll, I'll let it I'll let it slide. You guys didn't know, probably so. Right, right. right. At, at the to, at the time, I I actually we 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 booked the uh, the the interview, and then I believe I, it it occurred the day before the interview, probably. So at that at that point, it was uh well, it it would look bad on our behalf if we backed out, you know. Morty always in business for himself. Oh. Listen. Anyway, thank you. Thanks again for coming on. Um, we'll start out with uh, the simplest question ever. Maybe um, some people find it simple. Some people find it hard. What made you want to get into professional wrestling? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, probably the most generic answer. It's the fan as a kid, and you get to a point where going to college and you're like all these career options suck i want to go wrestle other grown men in my tights so yeah that's i want to live like a rock star and that's that's what i'm doing I, <laughs> yeah that's that's understandable uh, for, for absolutely for sure uh, so you used to be in a um uh, in, a, in a tag team with rush freeman what yeah, happened sadly what? What happened there? Uh, Rush just wasn't carrying his his part of the team. He's honestly he's the shits, and so we kicked him to the curb. Me and Plunkett made the group much stronger now. Danny Deals, the brains behind the whole thing. We had that bum Yuma in there too, and he's gone. We haven't yeah. seen that guy in forever. Yeah, Ca Captain Yuma. Mm -hmm. uh, I would almost say that that that. Yuma almost made you made the fans like you. Don't you want the fans to like you? I mean, as long as the checks come in the mail, brother, I don't really care. My guy. Okay, all right. I, I, I understand. And business I is business. And yet you're the one just saying I was going into business for myself. Pick a side here, bub. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> know your gimmick. My God. Anyway. Uh, so, you are now... Uh, teaming with Jeremiah Plunkett, and you have Danny Deals uh, managing you, correct? Yes, sir. Um, so, being that Danny Deals is kind of the guy that is in charge of all that all that merchandise for the NWA, why haven't I seen more ill-begotten merch out, out on shelves? Well, actually, I should have been wearing my ill-begotten shirt that you can get on the website. I'm rocking a, a Skinner shirt right now, but you can get the ill-begotten shirt on the site. Oh, oh okay. You're, uh, getting, you're getting awfully ballsy with this interview. I, I'm just asking questions. <laughs> I apologize. It's there. I expect this next time I see you guys both have one. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Um, it, well, it depends. Do they have size fat? I'm... Deal can get you a deal on anything. I'm there sure they go. do. Okay, all right, all right. If he could, if he could just screen print the side of like an old tent out of the four good sections of Walmart, I could probably wear it then. That'd be, be how we'd have to figure that one out. <laughs> but um, some old ring we can use. A what? I'm sure, there's some old ring mats we can use. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, it's an old apron or something. Yeah, <laughs> that, that'll work for sure. Yeah. So. With uh, 
I'm, what, 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 I can't even talk right now. What is your goal right now in the NWA? Uh, right now, it's me and Plunkett be the best tag team there is. Uh, be the world tag team champions. I, I don't know what other goal there could be. That's true. That and to put Sal Renaro in the hospital. That's oh. my immediate goal. Okay. But so, so after we, get past, after we get past the miserably faithful, gold. Right. So the main, let's say this is the the RPG of wrestling. Mm-hmm. The the main quest right now is to get the gold, but there's a few side quests. Yes. That include beating the living shit out of Sal Renaro, and um, also the miserably faithful will go down with them or as well. Else in their way. Right. So, with that being said, the, the um, why are you can't nervous? Do, are you nervous? I'm not nervous. I mean, he is kind of intimidating. He did he did get mad at me right at the beginning. So, just give me a moment. Uh, James Mitchell has put together quite a team, um, and to say that you want to take them on is is a big deal. Um, I have to ask, um, gags the gimp. When you wrestle him, is he slimy? I feel like it would, I feel like he's got to be covered in KY jelly or something. Uh, no, I think they check him before okay. for extra oils and stuff. He's he has a weird smell to him. Oh, I don't know if he ever washes that suit. That's I don't know if he ever comes true. out of that suit. But that's true. That's that's stuff I don't even want to know. Most uh, gimps don't. Well, have you <laughs> have you you see Pulp Fiction, right? They keep him in a box. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's. That's that's awkward. That's weird. Uh, uh, wearing the suit or being a gimp? Huh? Wearing the suit or being a gimp? Not cleaning, not washing oh. it. I no problem wearing it. Maybe there's a gimp code we don't know. Thou shall not wash thy suit. It could be a kink. We're yeah. getting way off topic. We're getting here. way off topic. I do apologize, Mr. Taylor. Um, however, um, so the current United States tag team champs are the Fixers. What are yeah. your thoughts on the fixers? The fixers. Um, it's a lot of mass, not very many brains, but their time will come. Okay. We'll get there. So, so they're, ju- they're just a step on the ladder to the top is what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Those U.S. tag straps are coming to the ill begotten sooner rather than later. All right. Confidence is key. Absolutely. Confidence is key. So where did you get your, your training to be a wrestler? I trained at the Black and Brave Wrestling Academy in uh, Davenport, Iowa, with uh, Seth Rollins and Merrick Brave. How was that? Cold. Yeah. <laughs> moving, moving to Iowa in the middle of the winter is not a good thing for a Tennessee boy, but I figured it out. I mean, how, but, how does that school run? Like, how... How many days do you train, or how intense did it get? Uh, very intense. Most intense thing I've ever been through. Um, we ran three nights a week, I think like four hours a night. It's been like seven years, so I'm trying to remember. But <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the same way they do it now, but yeah, it was it was intense. Actually so, yeah. So how did you meet Jeremiah Plunkett? Um, doing shitty independent shows in Tennessee. Okay. Um, uh, when you, when you say <laughs> shitty independent shows, you wouldn't be talking like, uh, Joe Kazana promotions or anything like that, would you? Uh, no, uh, Joe runs a quality show. Okay. I'm talking about. All right. I'm talking about shows that you probably never would have heard of. I didn't want to, I wouldn't want to talk to AJ or anything and, and tell AJ what you were yeah. saying. That would be out of line. I wouldn't want, want that to happen or anything. Um, but no, uh, we have other share beers after the shows. We're cool. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Just making sure. Um, I mean, <laughs> I've no, I've only been booked on one show in uh, in Tennessee. Primarily, I'm in Indiana. Uh, but I, I worked for it was NWA Mid South back when the NWA was still ran by Bruce Tharp. So do you do you know Greg uh, Anthony? Anthony? Yeah. All right. I know. Yeah, so. I've worked that show many times. Yeah, that it's hot thing with no 
It was, it was a good show. Okay, I was just making sure we yeah. weren't going down the shit show route. No, we're going down the yeah. Mid South Wrestling's pretty good. They they have they put on they have a the Herb Welch Complex there, in uh in uh, Dyersburg, Tennessee. They could just get some AC in that building. That'd be uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's that's real too. Did you ever get a chance? At, uh, this is way out there. Did you ever get a chance to work with Van Van Horn? I uh, yes, I have. Is he not the greatest dude in the world? He's one of them. Yeah, he is. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Sorry, uh, Van Van Horn uh, came up to to uh, Supreme and um, which is the show that I primarily worked for in Indiana, and he actually stayed at my house. Uh, because it was a, a it was a Friday and Saturday night mm-hmm. thing, and he just told stories of how he was, um, you know, basically a jobber back in the day, mm-hmm. and it was so good. Like, told me a story about how he was he was walking around. He he looked at the board and on, the, on and back in it was a chalkboard, and it, it said that he was working against uh, R S. So he was looking for Ricky Steamboat, walking around looking yeah. for Ricky Steamboat. Like, okay, cool. And he keeps asking, it's like, no, but we haven't seen, we don't think Ricky's here. And then all of a sudden walks up Randy Savage, are you Van Van Horn? And then <laughs> he realized that he got, to, he was wrestling against Randy Savage, and Randy let him punch him three times. After that, it was over. But he said, <laughs> he said he's like, I got to punch Randy Savage three times. Who, who could say that? I'm like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to take away from your interview, but, you know, Van Van Horn, you got to take, take him up and talk about him. He's, you can always take time for him. Yeah, absolutely. What Besides the NWA, what, what is the long-term goal for yourself? Where, where do you see yourself in the next two to three years? Is it the NWA? Is it outside? Are you going in like international? Uh, I love work. I love working for the NWA, and uh, I mean, as long as they'll have me, I'm glad to be there. But I mean, futures, whatever it is, I mean, I want to do it all. I want to see the world. I want to wrestle everywhere. So, I think you're in the right place. Then, yeah, absolutely. You know, it seems good. like they've got got a good group of guys down there. You know, young, hungry, they're passionate. You know, that that's what I feel like makes the NWA work is everybody's working towards one goal. Yeah, and the and the and the, uh, the the veterans there are all the type of guys that want you to learn from them. Mm-hmm. They're not the type that's just like, get away from me. Like Jax oh, yeah. Dane. Jax Dane is awesome to work with. I've worked with him a few times and he just uh, He's a, a, a wealth of knowledge, and um, we had Trevor Murdoch on the show, another person who I would love to just sit under his learning tree and just hear him talk. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm sure I'm sure you definitely uh, benefit from that. Oh yeah, right. those guys are. What's the word I'm looking for? They're very free with their uh, their knowledge. They're not a lot of guys. They won't share. They won't not here, but you know you know what I mean. There's guys that won't try to help out these guys are all trying to help everybody they got the greg the hammer valentine faces <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if there's any person right now and i think that I'm, I'm gonna know the answer that you could have a wrestling match with right now who would it be a wrestling match or beat them up in an alley i'll let you pick and then I want you to tell, tell me what you intend on doing in said match or alley beatdown. Listen, I mean, you guys know I want to murder Sal Renaro. So so I'll just put that to the side for a minute. Well, that's the easy answer. Mm-hmm. Other than that, um, I want to get in there with Kerry Morton. Okay. Because, I mean, Kerry, he's got all this hype, and he well-deserved. But, you know, I think I don't think Kerry can take me, honestly. So, I mean, that's something. Right, uh, un- unpopular opinion. You may dis- disagree with me, uh, but Kerry's not his dad, and I don't think he ever will be. Damn. Damn. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> don't know. Hey, well, Kerry's not coming on this. <laughs> I'll say it to Kerry's I'm, face. I'm not saying all that. I'm just saying I can take it. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Great. But I- I'm just saying make- this because Kerry may not remember this, but. I managed to cross the ring from Kerry in like 2015, and he was a snot-nosed punk. 
<laughs> he was like 12 years old, man. Uh, exactly. But he's still snot nose punk, nevertheless. He pissed at a kid. A child. Wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I got... I think you and Carrie would be a good matchup. Huh? Him and Carrie would be a good matchup. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it would be a good, a, a great match, for sure. You seem like you're itching to get in the ring, son. Who, me? Yeah. I'm always itching to get in the ring. I'm... I didn't shoot promos on Carrie Morton. I don't know what that's all about. I should... Touched a sore subject there, I guess. No, no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, I digress. Carrie is going to do great things. I, I just, was, I was just being silly because I, I did work with them a long time ago. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so, Carrie Morton is, is is your choice of who you would like to work with, have a match with. Um, I drew a blank. Continue on with something. That's, I feel like that's a good matchup, but you know, like. Tell the tape as they would back in the day. Those two, it would be a good entertaining match back and forth, I feel. You know, good bat. Like, it would be yeah, very absolutely. entertaining. For, for sure. So, you said that you trained eight years ago? Is that what you said? Um, what year is this? 2022, the year of our Lord. About, yeah, about seven and a half years. Okay. So, you've done some, some traveling. I have. What's one of your best travel stories? Ooh, okay. Um, ooh, I'm trying to think of the ones that I can tell that won't I've get heard people this. in trouble. That's usually the first thing people say is, I'm trying to think of the ones that I could tell. Yeah. I wish I could tell half the stuff Rip Rogers says in the car. <laughs> okay. Um, so... How do I start this? One day I'm at the shoot job. I get a phone call from uh, Plunkett and Crazy Steve. They're uh, going to New York the next weekend, and whoever they had going with them canceled. So they're like, hey, you free? That Saturday it was actually my birthday, and I was like, I'm, I'm down. So we jump in the car. We, we're on the way there. Steve's trying to get a hold of the promoter. Nothing. He's supposed to get our room that night. Nothing. So we end up paying for our own room that night. We get to the show the next day. Um, it's outside. There's probably 20 people there. It starts raining. Oh. That, it, start, it started raining right before my match. So half the show goes. i am got my gear on. I'm about to go out the curtain. It starts pouring. All right. Um, they uh, stop the show. We're all, the show's over getting dressed i'm contemplating my whole life what i'm doing um <laughs> we can't nobody can find the promoter but he's dipping in and out we finally get him uh they're holding him up at an atm he's giving out what money he can i don't know who got paid and what didn't he uh he shortchanged me by a, a, a bunch so i made him give me his oakley sunglasses they Turned out to be fake, but just Damn the fact that they, <laughs> taking a man's sunglasses gives you some power, though. Yeah. 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 So that happens. He obviously didn't get our room either night, so mm-hmm. that we that came out of our pocket. That's rough. And after that, we ate some pizza, and me and Steve went to a gentleman's establishment. That was the worst experience of my life. I'm talking about 50 plus year old women, not in good shape at all. Um, Showing off their C section scars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely a little coked up. Not me, them. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get through it. <laughs> Quite, clarify that. Yeah. Um, so I look over. I look over at Steve and I'm like, can, can we leave now? He's like, no, it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we had to drive like 30 minutes out of the way too to get to this place because it was the only one open. But in this awful experience. But those are the best, right? Oh, yeah. Best stories. The worst experiences are the best stories. Speaking- I remember uh, we did a Dragon Gate USA taping in Atlanta and we were out at the hotel. 
And I walked by uh, Moxley's room and out came Trina Michaels and Rich Swan. I was like, okay, well. Trina was an adult film star. <laughs> I, I caught me off guard a little bit, but I just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. So, with you know, that that's a, a bad booker story, of course. Um, have you ever worked for the nefarious Ian Rotten? I have not. Oh, you're um, lucky. Congratulations. Yeah, I, I was always told to stay away from there. So oh. that's he, he, one he got in late I, enough I to hear that. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, so, I was offered to you know, pay to try out, but I didn't. Oh, pay to try out. The, oh, yeah. The IWA pay to try out. Mid, a, 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 IWA Mid South pay to try out sessions. Those are just. Yeah. Those What's are just. They're, I, I don't remember, but I, I remember at one point I think they were like a hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm like, no, what? He's a damn ECW alumni, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, I want to thank you again for coming on here. I know we're, it, it's been a, a all over the place interview talking about everything from Kerry Morton to Sal Renaro to coked up strippers that have c-section scars um but if you had any advice for the young kid that's you know turning 18 years old and wants to be a wrestler what would you tell them um first i'd tell them don't (laughs) go to college Uh, but if they weren't going to listen to that um just get trained properly Mm -hmm. don't be a, a a goof like sal renaro and Start bumping at 13 to grown men. But, uh, you know, get trained the right way. Find a good school, a good trainer. And try to survive this business. Don't don't, don't be like Sal Renaro and bump it. So, Sal told us that in the interview about, about him doing that. So, it, it must be true. You got to put it, himself it, over? It, it, either that or he's just lying to, to everybody, even his <laughs> opponents. <laughs> My gosh, that thirteen years old bump, and that is I, that isn't isn't very smart. I I don't think I would be the the bump dummy for full grown men at thirteen. <laughs> I I cannot wait to see you and Sal lock up. I know it's going to be a good match. Uh, is it, are oh, you, there'll be no locking up. Oh, I'm coming out with fists. Okay, so yeah, yeah, coming out with fists. Uh, so is it, will this? Do we know if this is going to take place during a tag team match, or are you are you trying to shoot for that singles match so you can just be you and him? I mean, I'm trying to find his home address, but oh, damn. Oh, I mean, I could probably help you out. I mean, as long as you let us tape it and be the first ones to put it out there. That works for me. Oh man, now we're in the snuff film business. <laughs> <laughs> well. Once again, Alex, thank you so much for finding time to do this. I know I know life can be pretty busy and scheduling stuff is difficult. But uh, thank you so much, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, have a great one. Thank you. You too. Hey, everybody. It's Morty. It's Brian. And thank you for watching today's episode of Developmentally Speaking. If you could, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget to punch that bell icon so you can get notified whenever we go live or drop a new video every Monday. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next Developmentally Speaking.